Hey guys, Brewery 602 Beer Reviews here at Brewery 602 on Instagram. My name is Marcus, and today I have a very special announcement. Actually, on location at King's Beer Wine, and they uh, happen to be sponsoring this beer review, and I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Eric Walters of Tap That AZ fame. Me? Uh, yeah, yeah, that is you. <laughs> and um, you've heard me talk about Tap That AZ on the channel. Um, he's kind enough to put some of the beer reviews on his podcast um, and broadcast them. So pretty humbling to be asked to do a beer review here at King's. Dude, so, this is exciting, man. This I, is super exciting. Shout out to the team at King's, Mark and Sarah from King's. Awesome, awesome team. Thank you guys for sponsoring this. And we're excited. We're excited to be here at King's and have Marcus's knowledge just encapsulate you. So are you ready? <laughs> no, no, no pressure, no pressure at all. <laughs> or no encapsulation either, so we should. Uh... <laughs> so we're gonna be, uh, I guess, doing like a segment on your podcast um, that we're gonna be calling. Rating Arizona. Beers. So we're gonna be doing Rating Arizona Beers and we're gonna bring uh, some Arizona beers to you and just do some reviews on them. Yeah. And we thought, um, why not start with a medal winner? So this is Spellbinder from Renhaus Brewing Company, located in Phoenix, Arizona. Actually, uh, we're at King's, which is Central and Thomas in Phoenix. Uh, Renhaus is a stone's throw away from here, so. So close that we'll probably stop there on our way. It'd probably be a good idea home, to stop so there. Yeah. Might be a little late, Jackie, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Spellbinder actually won a gold medal at uh, GABF, which is the Great American Beer Festival, um, kind of like uh, the Olympics for craft brewer breweries. Yeah. So it's a really big deal to medal at all. I mean, a lot of these craft breweries send beers to GABF to get um, you know, judged. And Spellbinder, two years ago, I believe, won gold at yeah. GABF. Um, and just to let you know how hard it is, like all these breweries do send beers in. Um, and I believe this year there were only three medals awarded to Arizona breweries. So again, very, very, very difficult um, to medal. And so we're gonna go over a review on Spellbinder. I wanna know why, Ren House, why did you win? Uh, no, Ren, Ren they, I, I talk about it probably so much, they're one of my favorites. Uh, but it, it is crazy because you see some of these categories and there's like 20 people, 20 breweries entering, right? right? 20 beers that are competing. Where this one, Hazy IPA, this is like the, this is your crown jewel, like right. your money maker for a brewery, Correct. really, right? Yep. So there was 378, 378, I think, wow. somewhere in that. Somebody fact check for me and comment below. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I, I know there's a ton because New England IPA is probably the most popular yeah. uh, style right now. So yeah, I mean, even if there was 50 to 100, Winning a gold medal at that level is is pretty amazing. Yeah. So, so are we gonna drink it? Yeah, let's drink it. Let's crack it open. <laughs> so, you know, the way it works is this is um, obviously a category. Um, I believe it's fifteen. You know what? I'm not gonna say numbers because it's probably not right. Fifteen? What? What are we gonna say? Uh, so, there is a. Now this is where me the memory goes blank on everything. <laughs> So the whenever power they of editing, yeah, the right? power of editing. we're leaving that one in. Though. Whenever they, yeah, whenever they do uh, beer judging, they're, they're basing it off of the BJCP guidelines. Okay. And so in BJCP, beer judge uh, certification program, there's numbers for the different categories. Um, I'll have to look it up, but uh, IPAs its own category, um, and then they kind of break it up into different categories from there. They have subcategories. Yeah, there's subcategories okay. under you know, that and New England IPA just started, I think actually only a few years ago, yeah. uh, having its own category. Despite so, uh, despite pretty much every brewer's attempt to not make hazy IPAs popular. Right, right. The, the people spoke and <laughs> people spoke. Yes. And, and I mean, hazy IPAs are, to, I've seen a lot of people make their transition into craft beer because of a hazy IPA. Yep. You know, them say, I don't like IPAs. And I'm like, you're thinking of a, classic West Coast, which right. is which I love as well. But these beers are a great one of those. Uh, what do they call that? Like a um, 
gateway beer? Yeah, it's a gateway beer. <laughs> gateway beer. <laughs> if you weren't drinking a lot before and you drink one of these, right. then you're definitely going to start drinking a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so it is. And, you know, New England IPA, too, is, is very popular just because there's, very, there's no bitterness. Um, essentially, hops are what provide bitterness. Um, a lot of times, these breweries aren't even boiling the hops. When you boil hops, that's what pulls the bitterness um, from those hops. And when you don't boil them, you're pulling a bunch of oils and stuff like that and just getting aromatics. Okay. So yeah. Which I love. Like, I mean, that's a big part of your taste is what you're smelling as you're drinking. Exactly. Yeah. So they basically judge this beer based off of those categories. And so a lot of these breweries could have failed um, because you're now brewing to be judged. Uh, Okay. Okay. So even though it's a delicious beer, it may not fit the category guidelines in BJCP. Okay. Okay. So and that's how, you know, a lot of these beers are judged are based off of guidelines. And I know New England IPA, um, there's three strengths. You know, you just got your, like kind of your sessionable stuff. Okay. You have your mid strength and then your doubles yeah. or up above. Uh, so let's take a look at it. Um, so first and foremost, uh, port a hazy, uh, say what yellow pineapple juice in color. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. It's not as hazy as a lot of these beers that you see, but definitely, definitely got some nice haze to it poured a white compact head on there. And of course, all this talking dissipated quite a bit. Yeah, I, I've been trying so hard not to drink it. <laughs> so so most, most I've had a beer in a glass the longest period of time without drinking it. Uh, <laughs> Let's get a drive-by aroma. What is a, what is a drive-by aroma? Explain to her, because that's kind so, of one of your... Uh... Yeah, so a lot of people just kind of throw their nose in there. Um, I've, I've always, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I, I always like uh, growing up, I grew up on the West, West Phoenix area and there's a lot of like cow farms and stuff like that. You know, when you're driving um, and you have a window down, you kind of pick up all these aromas like really ah. quickly, you know, and, and, and you can, your mind immediately goes to what that smell is. Sure, um, yeah. Whenever you kind of dip your nose in there and it's like coming overthinking it. Like, what, do, what am I smelling right now? It's ah. like, you know what, just pass by, what did you smell? Immediately, just what pops in your head? You really asking me that? Yeah. What pops in your head? Pineapple. Pineapple. Because exactly. you already put that in my head because it looked like pineapple. Looks like pineapple. <laughs> oh, that, you know what though? And that's, you're, you're exactly right. That yeah. does happen. But no, yeah, absolutely. So definitely um, I get like a pineapple upside down cake, almost uh, some like marzipan. Um, you know, you get that white cake kind of thing going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like when you, that fresh baked white cake kind of aroma. Um, and, to, and that's a water profile thing. So. You know they're they're adjusting their water profile to make those hops really pop out. Ah, love it. Now I've heard another technique of the like the dog sniff, yeah. right? Because when dogs sniff, they don't do it. Right. They do the. Yep. Right. My wife sometimes like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, I'm smelling my beer. Come on. <laughs> yeah, the burst. The burst. Uh, I think it's like a wine thing too, right? Ah, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It smells good though. I mean, that's one of my things I love about hazy IPAs is the the smell of it yeah. like i'll sit there and smell a hazy for like five, a couple seconds, seconds right at least a couple <laughs> before you chug it yeah 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 and you know the so the other thing then i'll just go ahead and get a deeper aroma and kind of you know you breathe in through your your mouth and while you're breathing in through your nose kind of get it just kind of wet your whole palate with the, the aromatics but for sure marzipan there's a, there's a slight even berry thing in the background i would probably think more like a like almost blueberry-ish kind of in the background but all, all about the pineapple. All sure. about pineapple upside down cake. Um, and that's from the hops? That's all hops. Okay. All okay. hops, yeah. I mean, you don't really get too much of the uh, oats in there. They, I'm sure they're using a lot of wheat and oats and stuff like that to get the haze, but it's not really on the forefront. So anyways, let's get a yeah. taste on it, man. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Cheers to Kings as well. Kings beer and wine. It's a good beer. It is. <laughs> when was this canned? Where I was get, oh, it says drink by 1130. So, all right. So I'm a big, people will say, all right, you're a snob with beers. I'm like, I'm not right. I'm a snob with, uh, freshness. Yes. Right. So sometimes it says a can on date. This says, uh, drink by November 30th of 21. So what, what does that typically mean? So there's a couple of things here, Rent House that I do apologize for. We love you. you <coughs> we love you guys. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> Uh, one, there's no ABV on any of their cans. They never put an ABV on there, which is um, 
scary because if you're at a party, you imagine you take some uh, good boy Wally's, which if you don't know, it's a triple. It's like a 10 percenter normally. Any of the Wally series are tep like 10 percent beers. Love that. Love that series. Let's say you take, you know, an eight beers to a party and people are like, oh, yeah, great. I'm going to drink. And you know what? It doesn't drink like 10 percent. No, you know, no. and that's what makes it so great. Yeah. Right. And so you're trashed immediately. You don't know the ABV. So ABV is the first thing to tell you, hmm, can I have one of these or can I have five of these? Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the other knock is it doesn't have a can on date. Um, it has a drink by date. Uh, don't tell me when to drink my beer. <laughs> um, that, yeah, just I guess as simple as that. Yeah. Right? Uh, um, just let me know when it was canned and then I could determine from there when I want to drink the beer. I like that. I like that. Um, yeah. So those are the two weird things. Now, November, uh, probably giving, I would think they're giving it anywhere from four to six months on okay. the shelf because they do distribute. They are putting them in uh, kind of like the big box. Um, so you sprouts. Beer store, and, sprouts, yep. uh, total wine, stuff like that. So they're putting them everywhere. So they're probably giving, I would say, anywhere from four to six months yeah. uh, for freshness. Um, so obviously it's a fresh beer, but yeah, just a couple little tweaks on the can that no one cares what I say. Anyways, <laughs> as far as the beer is concerned, yeah. no bitterness whatsoever. No, no. Not a drop of bitterness. There's a slight sweetness to it that I think that oak character. Okay. Yeah, adds yeah. To that really nice creamy mouthfeel. I would say there's just enough. I wouldn't even say it's bitterness, right? But just enough to let you know that it's still a beer, mm -hmm. right? Like it's where it's like, okay, this is because I've had some hazies or some juicy IPAs that are like, that's a mimosa, right? Yeah. That's oh, yeah. not a beer. Not uh, a beer. But this right. is this is a beer. Like you, it, it has that yeah. that balance to it. Yeah, definitely uh, very creamy. Um, and again, that, that that pineapple marzipan thing. It's hard to just get away from it because because of the aroma. Yeah. But it drinks like like a pineapple upside down cake almost. Um, and again, the, I think the ABV on this is in the six to 7% range. I think okay. it's like 6.6 .6 or something like that. Cause they have their, their ABV is on their tap room yeah. walls, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's a really good beer. And what, what makes you think that this was chosen as gold? Like what, what, what about this beer? So whenever you look at it and if you're going to do BJCP, um, aromatics, color, head retention, and of course, taste and your overall impression of the beer. So, I mean, aromatics are just spot on. I yeah, mean, you yeah. get you get all the the fruit, all that juice, that softness, that marzipan, the, you know, the water profile. You could even when you could smell a good water profile, um, Treehouse, Trillium, um, Drecker. These companies that are doing these hazies that are real popular right now, you can you can smell the beer, yeah. and you know it's their beer. Yeah, and it's all based uh, on water. Interesting. Renhouse water and yeast. Okay. Um, Renhouse uses a house yeast, and build their water profile, and so you know it's a Renhouse beer. Okay. So the aromatics are like spot on. Obviously, the the haziness, the color is spot on. Um, and it drinks soft. There's not a big bitterness punch to it. So, I mean, as far as New England IPA is concerned, I mean, it's, it checks like all the boxes. All the boxes, you know, yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, you could see why it would score extremely high. I mean, it would probably score, it probably scored like over a 45 um, out of 50. They, they judge. Okay. You know, if you score in the 20s, it's drinkable. Okay. Um, 30s, you're like, that's a really good beer. Okay. If you're in the 40s, you're like, you're a gold medal winner. Like this is a fantastic beer. Yeah. Um, and I've never seen a 50. Like, judges don't give perfect scores. No perfect. So no, no perfect. Uh, score, so, so. Arizona, there's your challenge. Make it perfect. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, but yeah, definitely a great beer. Um, I don't know. Are we rating rating beers. I don't think we're we gonna rate them or. I, I mean, this is yeah. It's rating Arizona so. rating beers, oh, right? Geez. Um, yeah, we might have to we have to have a structure, right? Yeah. I guess because you do. 90. Yeah, I do zero to 100. Zero to 100. Basically. What's like the lowest score C. you've ever given? Uh, a C, like a, like, seven, like a 70, 70. Okay. 71. Okay. Yeah, I've never given anything less than that. And typically I won't actually even post it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you just. I'm like too scared. I'm yeah, like, oh. yeah. Well, I'm going to get yelled at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, yeah, I, I say we, we don't have to, do we? We do. We have to. It's called Rating, it's rating Arizona. Arizona. 
So no, this is on. This is not. You're on the spot. I'm not on the spot. You're not, I do this. Anyway. You do this all the time. <laughs> so are we doing a one to ten? One to ten scale? We could do a one to ten. We could do. Um, yeah, we could do one to ten. Are we going to allow half points and stuff like that? Mm, like, yeah. would, like, would you be like, okay, and then and then are we going to base it off of the other? like other New England IPAs that you've tasted? Oh, that's a good Instead question. Instead of just beer in general. Yeah, that's a good question. See, because I'm going to rate everything awesome, right? Yeah. So we could, we, let's just say based off of New England IPA, mm -hmm. like out of a 10, I would score that a nine. I like that. All right. You guys were just there to witness our hashing out of the rating system, which you would have thought we would have thought of before, but uh, yeah. now. Nah. <laughs> Swing it. So I would say um, we're, we said half points. We're gonna half points. We could do halves, quarters, whatever. If you whatever you feel. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna do a nine point one two five. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I was gonna go. I was gonna go there too, but <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you did. So yeah, definitely. So what's the average then? Between nine point one two five. <laughs> Nine point zero six two four, I think. Uh, check that. Somebody, somebody, check that. Uh, no, nah, fantastic beer. Love re what Ren House does. Um, interest. I don't think it was for Spellbinder, but uh, have you seen the local uh, PBS show? Um, uh, it used to be Check Please. Uh, Mark Tarbell is the the Platon pour. So on PBS they have this this Arizona, basically Phoenix. Um, kind of like a Bourdain type show where Mark Tarbell, Chef Mark Tarbell goes to places and they, you know, show them what they do and they, like, you know, they cook. It's a, it's a travel uh, food show. Anyways, they did an episode with Ren House and as they were filming it, uh, Preston got notification that they won gold for their oh, wow. Valley, was it Valley Beer? Valley Beer, yeah. Yeah, so go to, I don't know, find uh, uh, Plate and Pour and Arizona, you'll be able to find it. If you're watching this, you know how to work the internet. <laughs> but but find the episode with Ren House, and it's pretty cool to see. I mean, first of all, Preston's just, a, they're, they're just really cool dudes. Uh, the head brewer Preston is just like the most uh, apprehensive about being in, in the spotlight. Yeah, uh, for so sure. for him to be on that show, cameras in front of him, and then for, for you to get that genuine, like, holy shit, man, yeah. we just won. So watch that, watch that. Plate and pour, really, really good show. Um, and Ren House is, keeps doing great shit. They just opened up a new spot up in Prescott. Prescott. Yep. Yeah, big patio in the middle of like, looks like the Serengeti or something. I haven't had a chance, <laughs> haven't had a chance to, to, to hit that one yet, but definitely uh, plan on getting out there with Ad Astra and Will and yeah. yep. all those uh, places up there, so. Excellent, excellent. All right, man, we rated it. Uh, I'd, I'd drink it again, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's actually <laughs> one of the staples in the beer fridge. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a go-to that, beer. That is nice to have a beer like that. And there's other, other places like, you know, Helton and, and the shop that are, you're starting to be able to find their yeah. place, their beers that you can only get at the tap room. Now at yeah. your yeah, local Spellbinder, sprouts. church music and refuge. And that's oh, all yeah, you need. Yeah. So. <laughs> you got, you got, <laughs> and how do those rank for you now? We'll, we'll, we'll rate those ones <laughs> later. Uh, once again, thank you to Mark and his team here at Kings. Uh, you guys are the best. Like this is this is awesome. We're really excited to do this. So uh, subscribe. Make sure you follow Kings Beer and Wine. Make sure you follow this guy. Where do you follow him? Brewery Six Hundred Two Beer Reviews. There you go on YouTube. And I am Eric from Tap That AZ. Also, a Taste of AZ. If you like food as much as you love beer, then check out a Taste of AZ. And we have a free magazine. Absolutely. Free magazine all about Arizona food and beverage. ATasteofAZ.com. Go there, subscribe for free. Kings Beer and Wine. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Kings Beer and Wine. Cheers.